digital transformation in the gym sector. I'm sure most of you are members of Fitness First already. Uh, there, are, there are certainly some members outside. I met, I met some earlier. Um, you know, as a business founded in Bournemouth as a single rackets club in 1993. Uh, it's, grown, it's grown over time to be over about sort of 25 countries. At the moment, it's 16 countries, million members, about 480 gyms scattered around those countries. Uh, during that journey from single club in Bournemouth to where it is today, it's gone bust. It's been bought by two separate venture capital companies. Uh, and the mission I got 20 months ago was, from my friend the CFO, there's a problem with IT, we need to change it. Great, that, that's, that's all you got. Um, and you know, this is essentially the journey we've been through in that time. Um, so as a, as a company, many of you will know it. Um, my friend, the CFO up there, you, you probably don't know him as well. You know, it's sort of, it's fair to say that many of the organizations who are in the market or are here today, some of you have existed for a long time. Um, 300 years, 200 years, Victorian times, Edwardian, just after the First World War, Second World War, 50s, 80s. And there are some organisations, you know, we're 1993, there's others who've appeared in recent times very quickly. You might remember a couple of chaps at Harvard who did something with some pictures. Uh, that turned into quite a successful business. Um, there's many others uh, in, in our sector. Um, the largest player at the moment in the UK market is Pure Gym. Uh, they started business in 2009, and they're now the largest player in the UK. Uh, part of the problem in the gyms industry is it's easy to start, it's easy to get in, you need some premises, yeah, people will let you have money for premises, you kind of put some special flooring in, you get some machines which you lease, you get some nice people in Lycra, you have a little bit of technology, and you print money. Uh, the bit gets harder later on when you go, well, now we'd like to expand and we want to do an IPO or we want to buy somebody else. All of a sudden, it becomes a slightly difficult story because how much money are you printing? Oh, not very much. Then you suddenly find companies like uh, last year, LA Fitness, just run into the ground, under investment, no money at all. All you can do is sell it, merge it somewhere else, hope someone else who's new is creating enough money or can raise enough funds in order to create a viable business. So it becomes quite complicated. And for, for us, the, uh, the, the analogy we like is that of the, the chessboard, where if you take a, you know, a bag of rice from Sainsbury's and stick a grain of rice on the first square of the chessboard and then double it on each square, by the time you get to the end of the first square of chessboards, you've piled enough rice on there from bags of rice from Sainsbury's, who are very grateful for the sales at this point, um, to create about one field of rice. And as an analogy, that's more or less where we have gone in a computing journey since Mr. Turing and Co. in the 1940s. We've just about crossed over onto the second half of the chessboard. As you continue to replicate that model of doubling the amount of rice on each square of the chessboard, you then create, by the end of the chessboard, enough rice to form a pile as big as the Himalayas and probably a little bit longer. So we're only just moving over the inflection point and for some of the businesses who've been around for a few years, the question is, are you going to meet our cyber friend and he's going to do that to you? And we, we push this message out to all of our IT and digital folk around Fitness First, around the world, and we have this picture everywhere, and it just keeps reminding you, you are this, either you're going to fight, you're going to win, or you're dead, you're going to be deleted, because today it is becoming an asymmetric fight. You are either a company who can move fast, or you are a company who is doomed, and there aren't that many in between, regrettably. So it's quite an interesting, uh, an interesting situation we find ourselves in. This whole concept of asymmetric warfare um, in our industry has been utterly revolutionised on that chessboard model. Incidentally, the, the fold in the chessboard was about 2008. So around 2008, you remember, perhaps, sort of nice smartphones like this started to become available. Uh, the Apple iPad appeared. Um, a number of other bits of technology appeared. The amount of computing power available on a consumer device or in your pocket came to a point where you could do amazing and wonderful things. And if I look what I can do with my smartphone in my pocket, it's got more computing power than the Ares 2 image processing device that I used at university, which occupied a room about this big and needed an awful lot of cooling to get it anywhere near a temperature you could work in. 
and that's where we've moved on. For us now in the fitness industry, it is all about the device and how much technology we can push onto that and how much technology will you bring into the building for us and we just exploit. There are, of course, a series of building blocks in, in any digital environment. I spent a little bit of trying, trying to nudge them all down just so we could see what was there. And they're sort of just about all built up. Um, you'll note one error that uh, social appears twice, but maybe social's more important. Or maybe I just copied the wrong block twice. There's a few things on there worth picking out. Um, uh, agile as a methodology, as an approach, and we distinguish that from agile in terms of small a moving fast. Uh, 20, 20 months ago, um, my friend the CFO, who you met a couple of slides ago, said to me, IT needs transforming fix it. And we spent, we spent 20 months doing that. About six weeks ago, he said to me, well done on transforming things, but what can we do now? What more could you do? And I said, well, you know, give us, give us a couple of days. And we came back a couple of days later and said, how about this? And he said, OK, that's very interesting. It all looks very modern. Yeah, you just want to spend some money again, bloody IT as usual. Um, how come it's half the cost? I said, technology's moved on. He said, but you know, this is, this is amazing. Why didn't you propose this 20 months ago? Why have, you wasted my, why have you wasted all my money for 20 months? I said, yeah, but it wasn't available then. The technology that we're now proposing, that bit came available in January. That bit was November of last year. That bit was last summer. It didn't exist. And that's how quick we're having to move. So agile fast, move the business quickly, agile the method, beware the religion. There are a number of people who regard agile as a religion. I have seen people driving it as a religion and not doing it effectively. A bottom line on the foundation's DevOps. We've now implemented uh, a DevOps process, automated code release. We can control what's happening. We know where it is at all times. If you try and fiddle the system and stick stuff in that hasn't been approved correctly, it gets rolled out inside half an hour and you won't even know it's happened. And nothing can be broken. So you know, we've used technology in order to remove people, to reduce the white collar workforce, um, and to do things quicker. So IT in Fitness First used to be about 170 people. It's now 18. So that's quite a big, uh, quite a big white collar reduction. Um, things are becoming more important to us. Uh, you know, we can attach an eye beacon and make every one of our exercise devices a thing in some form. And so I will know when you are using a particular device, and I will know that you always use treadmill number 17 in the Hammersmith Club, and you never go to any other one. And I might wonder why that is. It might be the view, it might be it's the one you always go to, maybe nobody else uses it, I don't know. But it starts to give us data and information that becomes interesting to us as a business. Have we got a defective machine? That's always the one that's going to be available. Or is it that there's a very nice view from there? Very interesting for us to find out. Um, there's a number of other things that we found in the last 20 months. We've gone and we have refreshed all of our vendors. We've changed everything. Therefore, we've recontracted with everybody. It might be the same company with a new contract. It might be a new company with a new contract. It sure as hell wasn't an old company with the old contract. And that bit has changed. And what we've also seen is the, the rise of the click tract. And my friends, the, the technology lawyers, have said, well, don't bother arguing about it because they won't change it. So you have to take a risk call on, is this now acceptable? And when you're working in the, the PaaS and the SaaS space and you're buying stuff that is standard and you're making those building blocks fit for you, you're going to work with the contract that's there. And the amount that you can change is now quite variable. Of course, the bit that is variable is the services contracts, which you can enforce on whichever suppliers you have working with you. Uh, the whole skills model has now changed. I had quite an interesting discussion on uh, Friday evening with a number of CIOs up in the, the north about what skills will we need in the SAS, PaaS and IaaS world. And of course the answer is quite different skills. So when I look at some of my, my current regions and I look at the skills mix, I'm now looking at probably an 80 to 90% washout of the people who are there and replacing them with other people who are different with different skills because actually that's what we need to operate the business with today. Um, some other interesting bits in here. The minimum viable product. Um, certainly one of the projects I inherited was a, product, a project that was not operating according to a minimum viable product model. It was making the maximum unviable product. Um, and obviously we had to rein that one in and bring it back. But you know, focus on the MVP. What do you need to get out in the market and start making money or delivering a service? 
and many people don't really understand that concept. It, it is fundamentally important 